But hey, one time for your mind, it's your man Mastermind with my co-host with the most. What's going on? It's your boy Big Co. Welcome to the Big Co. Show. It's Wednesday, 7.30-ish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We uh got a great show in store mm-hmm. for you this evening, as you can see. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, about an hour and a half or so from now, the LA Lakers will be going to pursue their 17th championship. I'm down <laughs> like class. I was like 12 years old, man. You know what I'm saying? So I know there's a bunch of LeBron haters out there. We'll holler at y'all tomorrow. But uh, so yeah, I had to work. I had had to represent my team. We got a great show uh, lined up for tonight. So how how you doing, sir? Bruh, um, it's 30 some odd days until the election. Please vote, vote, vote. I got my uh, ballot in the mail yesterday. Okay. So I'm going to put my stuff in early. Please uh, get your early ballots. You have until October 5th. You can. It's easy. You don't have to stand in line. You fill it out. You got time to to research every candidate, or you can just go Democrats straight up and down. Shout out to Irash. What's happening? Did you watch the uh, the debates yesterday, sir? Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so I mean, just do. drop them off. Drop them off instead of standing in line. Just drop them off in the in the bins, and it's safe. It's quick, and you don't have to worry about no hanky panky with your vote. All right. We do have, we don't have to talk about the debate. So I mean, but I feel like because it happened last night, we yeah. should at least mention, Just mention it. Yeah, the debate, yeah. and you know, I know what stuck out to me. It, it was like for real. It was it was really kind of like watching Charlie Brown's teacher, and then like they asked the question about you know him denouncing these white supremacist terrorist groups. Stand by. And he said, stand by. Like, okay, I, like, we haven't talked about this. Like, we have not discussed this. No. But clearly, that had your antennas up as well. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. But we, you know, I, I digress. Yeah, we'll like, get to that one day. Like, somebody, somebody made the comment that, like, watching the debate was like watching me and one of my good partners, my old boy Freddie, <laughs> being drunk and having an argument. Oh, you know God. what I'm saying? Like, and if you've ever seen one of those, Drunk Corey Freddie argument. They don't happen anymore, but like when they used to happen, they were quite ridiculous. So like even them making that comparison is like wow. And and you know, so I, I digress. But tonight we want to kind of talk about a spinoff of what we talked about last week because last week was heavy, right? It, it was. Like, we got the announcement about Breonna Taylor, and people had some feelings about it. So mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm still. Still sore, you know. I'm sure we'll be sore for a lot of time. And again, I'll say I'm not surprised, but still sore. So I saw because you know somebody said to me, they asked me that, like, what is your show about? And really, this is for real what the show is about. Like, I know you know this, but the show is really about what I see people talking about that I want to talk about. Like, that's what the show is about. It, there, uh, there are no. No themes. I think everything I, I we talk about, we wanted to touch a lot of people, yeah. you know, and we wanted to like build bridges for conversation. Talking about we, stuff worth talking about. We talk about stuff worth talking about. Like, I mean, that's really what it is. So I, I saw somebody equated the whole situation with Breonna Taylor mm-hmm. in regards to the most recent quote that Malcolm X said that Re- LeBron repeated, mm-hmm. you know, about the black woman being the most disrespected human on the planet and yeah, yeah. they made the comment which didn't occur to me initially that the fact that it was a black woman in this situation like she was disregarded even less than it would have been if it would have been a brother a black man that would kill so it got me thinking you know about that and i you know i put it out there and, and some people have some strong opinions about that because this is something that we've talked about in our circles for years oh yeah but these are some conversations that i feel like absolutely need to be had but that's that, that kind of sort particularly because nobody wants to be seen as the oppressor you know what i'm saying so we'll get into it but i, I think a lot of times in a lot of these situations when it, when it talks about the black woman a lot of times the black man is the oppressor so we got some great guests on yes we. i want to bring everybody on and introduce them okay and, and we'll get right into it who do we have up first, sir? First, coming to the show, we have Erica. Erica. Hey, Fem- guys. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Big Co Show. Hey, how are you guys? 
We're doing great. How about you? Good, good. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about me. Well, I've been a black woman for 41 years. So I think oh, right. really, oh. really, really, <laughs> really uh, qualified to speak on this topic. Uh, professionally, I, I work with um, federal grants, do some federal grant consulting, um, and just a family wellness advocate. So I've always been uh, adjacent to that type of work. So I've been doing that for uh, eons. So um I think I have a little bit to say today. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So I thought about this like really literally five minutes before I came down here. I thought about this. I've recently, and I think it kind of fits with the topic of the show. I've recently been watching like Girlfriends, and I've admittedly let you know, I didn't watch it when it was on. What? Yeah, I know. I know people people jump on my, my but I'm, I'm into it now. So. Okay. One of the que- uh, questions I have for you, so if you could relate, like if if, if the girlfriend got <laughs> five love like okay. type thing, like if you could relate to any of the girlfriends, be like, honest, who would be the person that you most feel like your personality is akin to? Yeah, I had this conversation with a good friend of mine all the time, and we have surmised that I'm most like Joan. Joan. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome to the show, Eric. We're gonna bring out our next guest. We're gonna get it. All right, good deal. Oh, next we have Valerie Reese. Hello, Valerie Reese. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. Welcome, welcome, to, welcome to the show. show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Who you are? We got to see the shirt. Oh, okay. so yeah. the shirt is courtesy of my daughter who likes to make shirts. And so the shirt okay. says, be happy, be healthy, and be elsewhere. I like it. Yes, because sometimes- Be happy, be healthy, healthy, and be elsewhere. That's be all elsewhere. right. Yes. So tell the audience of the Big Coast show who you are, my sister. Um, I am a small town Georgia native. I'm from a small town called Millen, Georgia. Um, I am a You're graduate right. of the University right. of Georgia. Go dogs. Um, go dogs. Um, currently, I reside in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, professionally, I am a school psychologist, um, and I am the owner of Better Days Counseling Services. Um, oh, other than that, um, <laughs> other than that, I'm a mother of two, um, uh, and okay. and just enjoy um, discussing anything that is beneficial to the black community. Yeah. And yeah. I'm so glad that you came on the show. So, like, how Valerie, like, Valerie's always, like, we always have a conversation either via social media or in real life about real stuff. You know what I mean? She's, like, one of the most, like, conscientious people I know. So when I posted this, the, the, the comment about it, she was just like, I agree. And I was like, yeah, I need you to be you and tell me how you feel. And then she has some very, very insightful things to say. So same question of the girlfriends, who would you akin your Tony. Tony. I mean, more like, yeah. I I, I can see myself being more like Tony. All right. I got you. Is it okay? So I'm going to go with because I feel like I know you to a degree. I think it's more of the standard thing that you're not going to compromise will make you a Tony thing. Because it's not the realistic part about it. I know that's not it. I mean, not. I I know that's not it. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Hold tight one second. We'll get into it. Who got up next, brother? It's Dog Nikki. Nicole is in the building. Nicole. Oh, hey. How you doing? You surprised <laughs> Hello, love love. The, Spreading the love. love. Spreading the love this evening. How love are you good. all? Good, good. Talk you look lovely as usual. All, all of our guests are lovely. Lovely ladies. I love it so much. So tell, <laughs> tell the, the people... A little bit about you, please, ma'am. Okay, let's see. I'm a 45 year old Atlanta native. Um, grew, up in co- grew up in College Park. Um, UK, baby. Yeah, I am a bulldog, ride or die, red, red and black yeah. all day. Uh oh, somebody's here. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm a head baker at my um, bakery, uh, the Rolling Pin Bakery ATL, and I'm a mother of. Thank you. And I'm a mother of one, a college student at UAB. Shout out okay. to my niece, Layla Boo. Shout out, Layla Boo. Hey, <laughs> Boo, you're a at UAB, too. I'm a student at UAB. Right. Let me go ahead. I'm a 
no, uh, yeah, you did a great job. Uh, great job. Uh, uh, Uncle Kyle so, gonna keep her keep her straight, but yeah, she's she's you know doing saying? good. That's, she's that's doing good. good. Great job, great job. So, same question. Welcome to the show. Same question. Thank you. Which friend would you identify with? Girlfriend. I have to go with Erica. I'm a Joan too, all day. We got two yeah. Jones in the gym. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. We got show next. Oh, it might as well. Let's see. Is it? Yes, it is. It's Shelby McDonald. Hello, Shelby. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. How y'all doing? We're good. doing great. I was worried for a second. I was just like, oh, she on that Metro PCS. Lord, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to hate on Metro PCS now. Like, I'm going to tell you, like, I'm with Sprint now, right. but I was with Metro PCS for a long time, and that $60 bill was okay with me, bro. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Hey, Shelby, how you doing tonight? Great. How y'all doing? Why don't you good. tell us a little bit about yourself, love? So I'm Atlanta native, um, never lived outside of 285 other than when I was at the University of Georgia. Wow, uh, wow. wow. We wow. seen a theme for the show, right? Dude. Yeah, Erica's a dog too. About inside 285, <laughs> I'm the city, I'm a city girl. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm Georgia down, I got my G sweater on. Um, oh, yeah. Mama one. Oh. daughter is a sophomore in high school. I cannot believe <laughs> we're there. And um, I am a senior bodily injury claims adjuster for an insurance company. Awesome. Welcome my neck and my back. Welcome oh. to the show. So, same question. Which girlfriend do you identify with? Tony. Tony. <laughs> Foolishness. And I'm just going to tell you what I think, and I'm moving on. She's very good. She's very good. <laughs> So but y'all know me. Y'all have known me forever. I, I haven't changed. Right, right. Okay. Straight up, no chase. I love it. Uh, mm. Wait, Where, we, got Joan, we got a John and two Tonys? We got a John and two Tonys. All right, so y'all just ain't going to get along. Y'all just going to break up and not see each other. I'm sorry, you ain't seen them. No, I didn't say that. You know, no, you really did. Season three. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not a spoiler. You had 40, 20 years to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of judgment in the room this evening. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's my shirt. I don't know. Let's see what character he's going to be. Will you? Yeah. Make oh, yes. All of them. Yes. All of them. All of them. Hold on, Thomas. Before we even get into it, I knew the first thing that was going to be the thought was like, Thomas is the William. Thomas is not the William. I'm not giving him. The, but I did think about we got like all these women and one dude. So I did think about the show. Watching, so like, he's, that's the oh, he's Mr. Peterson. I don't even know who that is. Should I know who that is? Come on, man, you're giving away the show. I'm talking about you when they work at a law firm. They work at a law firm. Do you ever see that dude? Yeah. Okay, look, dude, he's is he watching the show? Okay, is anyway. he watching the show? Tell me what's going on, man? We'll talk about that in a bit. Like, tell me what's going on. Welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? Thank you, brother. Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, but I do identify with all of the characters for the sake of this conversation today. Okay. Well rounded. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. Selfish, moody. I do. I do. I do. All of that. Okay. I like it. A reason I really do say that is because a um, bit part of my life, most of my friends have been female. Okay. And um, so I got to experience all of that. And now I'm, I'm a 45 year old man from it, um, married man, let me say that, from Atlanta. Um, have three kids, 23 year old um, son who's a cop. I have twin seventh graders, um, boy, girl. I have a granddaughter who's four and a half years old and a grandson who's one and a half years old. So Dipping into all these different, uh, I guess you say, intersectionalities of between age and uh, gender. Oh, I got, I got a lot to say today. I got a lot to say today. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I do need to share this. Can I have a dollar? Yeah, I got right. you. It, you can have, you can have more than a dollar, brother. I'm gonna teach you how to make a dollar. Woo! <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly, bro. You talking about being married and stuff? Big shout out to my wife, Carmen. She, was, she is watching. She says hello to everybody. She hello, Diva. To uh, Shell Bina and to Diva Reese. She says hello. So look, so is is everybody? So I want to go. So I want to start with Erica. So like Erica. 
So based on the topic, what we discussed, like we said, like LeBron James recently repeated a, a, a Malcolm X quote saying that the black woman is the most disrespected human being on the planet. Like, what is it is something that you would want to say to people that we just do not understand? It's almost like this, it's almost the same conversation to me. Let's just give you a little background. So like when I look at when I look at the fact that Malcolm years ago and LeBron said today like it's like and, and it's two totally different eras. Like you shouldn't be able to have the same quote in the same mm -hmm. time. What is it that even speaking directly to the can, can we say to the brothers? Can we do that? Don't if you're speaking directly to the brothers, what is it that we do not understand when it comes to this particular everybody get quiet fellas listen and we say it once go ahead so when it comes to the topic of black women being the most disrespected we're we're kind of at the lowest end of the totem pole everywhere we go including in our own homes so you know, we go out into the world, you got to put your armor on, you got to go to the office, you can't be soft, you can't be weak, you come home, you still kind of got that armor on, and, and the men aren't necessarily sensitive to that. It's, hey, well, I need you to be a lady when you I need you to be soft and, and docile and, and, you know, all of these things, and that stuff, it really, it really, uh, you know, it, it eats away at the core of you because it's kind of like you're having to be two different people. That's difficult. Imagine if you have to go out and be this way. I mean, we can all liken it to just being black, you know, kind of that code switching. We've all heard about that. Women are code switching on race. You're code switching on being a woman because you can't go into the into the workplace being so soft and docile and things like that, you get run over quickly, you know, especially if you're in positions of leadership and things like that. And so I think when you're talking about men uh, and, and the men that we're in relationship with, they're having to be able to understand that, um, to understand that when we come home, it takes a little moment to, to, uh, to bring that down, to, to, to get balanced and things like that. And so I would just ask that, you know, our, our men would be a little bit more understanding to that. Right. So I asked Nicole, so in, re in regards to what Erica just said, do you also feel like it's a lot of pressure? Because I think we all have that duality as people of color, right? We have areas where we feel comfortable being who we are, and then we know that we have to put on the show to do whatever it is we're supposed to do. So, like, do you feel that it also comes from, like, black men? Like, not, not only do you have to put on a face for the man, but then I have to come uh -huh. up with certain things for you. Do, do you agree with that? What do you think about that? Um, I, I think Erica's, Erica hit on something. We as women, period, black women especially, live on both sides of the track. So we've got to play the role at work, like she said, but we also have to play, we're not playing a role at home, but we are playing a role at home. If you want to, how do I say this? If you want to keep the peace, because <laughs> your mother, if you have children, you're a daughter, if you, you know, if you've got your parents are alive. And as my grandmother says, we're, we're pr pretty much part of the sandwich generation. So we are caring for aging parents oftentimes, in addition to our children and our families. And we're in the middle trying to balance that work balance play life while also being attentive to, to our men. Um, both at in, in the daylight and at home and in bed. And that then becomes very stressful if you've got a lot going on. And oftentimes, our, you know, we're, we're taking kids to soccer practice and band practice and ballet and kids to football and sitting at track. And dad just may be cutting the grass mm -hmm. or taking the trash out. But we're also cooking, cleaning. You know, there's a there's far more on our side of the page than there is sometimes on our black man side of the page. And that also extends at work. We we tend to work harder than anybody at work because we don't want to be looked at any differently. And we've got you know, you've always got to be better, two times better mm -hmm. than your white counterpart. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're, we're half putting half out a lot of and, yeah, and get half as much. So, you know, we we're being pulled in, on, on a lot of levels, but we're also burning both ends of the candle. Nice. So at some point, you know, 
the candle burns out and you still try to give that love and affection to everyone, but you're like a battery, you need to be recharged. And sometimes our black men don't really look at that. They look at it as if we're complaining. Right. And so, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do this one thing for you, but that's supposed to recharge me from six months ago. Right. And, you know, you know, so that that's that's kind of, you know, as opposed to a daily recharge that we're putting in and putting out. Oftentimes our, our, our spouses or significant others may not be recharging us quite to the point of a full battery, if I can use, right. the, use that analogy. Right. So, Shelby, I see you nodding your head. So, like, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how does that make you feel? Because I've heard this a lot of times. Like, and, and here's the thing that, that blows my mind, like, for real. And, and I'm going to get straight to it. Get straight like, to it. I feel like black women tend to hold us down all the time under all types of circumstances. Unemployment, underemployment, infidelity, extra babies. You know, uh, dr uh, alcoholism, drug abuse. But I feel like when when a woman, and I know that it's the it's the fragile male ego that we could have a whole show on. I just don't. <laughs> it feels to me like when a woman does anything that is not up to the quote unquote standard of what they're looking for, like we ready to just cut ties and and and, and go away from that. Chef, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, here you want the truth. So here it is. Here's the thing. Okay. Something that Nicole and Erica said. When we go to work, we don't get, we're not ourselves. I have people at work don't know me. Y'all know me because y'all see me in the football games and I'm me. But they don't know who I am. All they know is my name is Shelby McDonald. But they don't know who I am because I can't be me at work. Because if I'm me at work, if I don't speak to the white girl, I don't go. That she gonna take you to HR. <laughs> and is oh well, Shelby's not a team player. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to a promotion, eh, even though I've done three times the work as my white counterpart, she's gonna get the promotion because remember I'm not a team player. Because not that I did anything, but because I didn't speak to her. So when we do that at home. At work, and then we come home, and your home is supposed to be a place of rest and peace. And get you got to do, we got to cook them, got to make sure the kids did their homework. We got to make oh, mama remember got that bail. Oh, remember you the room mom, and we we need snacks for tomorrow. Remember that field <laughs> trip? I forgot to bring you the uh, slip. Can Son, I need money for the for the gift shop. They don't go to dad for that. I will, and I'm willing to bet Thomas can attest that they don't go to dad for that. Yeah. I've gotten to the place now where I don't sign stuff. If you don't, let me be clear. My daughter's 15. You don't bring it to me with a pen. It don't get signed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we're expecting. I, I, I'll say to do. I've always been the class dad, though. I, I've always been the class dad. So I, there are I, no. I, I've always been the class dad. Yeah, me too. Uh, my hours wouldn't allow for me to being, do that. Being the room parent, being the room parent is a second job. Uh, it is. And my daughter goes to a predominantly white school. So too. they to. always want my money. <laughs> Look, they always want my money. <laughs> right. I can't donate my money, but I can donate my time. But right. then I give you my time and you want more of it. Mm -hmm. But is that, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's more like a woman thing. Than a, I think, don't you think? Like, I mean, I think, I think unfair across the board, like women across the board, like, but you touched on something that I wanted to go with Valerie about because we kind of discussed this on, on the original post. And it was about like women in, in positions of like, like for professional positions. Like one of my friends was trying to make the assumption that a lot of times there will be women in positions of power that may or may not have been as qualified than other men trying to imply that, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's an argument about a lot of people. You know, when you have a black woman, you kind of have two boxes that you can check off. So 
What are your thoughts? And you can share your thoughts on anything that we've discussed up to this point, but I know, you know, we specifically talked about that. Hello, Valerie. Hey. And, and we did talk about that. Like you said, we do. We do check two boxes. But I think a lot of times, like I said, people don't see the behind the scenes, how much harder I have to work even when I'm in that position. The fact that I'm often paid less in that position mm -hmm. to do the same job. But the expectation is still that I go above and beyond at all times. You know, and when um, the other ladies were talking about, you know, the different roles that we fill, the one thing that I really need black men to understand is that what you do has a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. So when I'm dealing with your children at school, the way that you talk about their mother, the way you talk about black women, period, is going to deal with is going to reflect in how they deal with me. Yeah, because of what right. they've what they've seen, they've heard, what they've encountered from you, and not just from you personally, but from the movies, from music, from TV shows, how we're portrayed overall, it has a trickle down effect, and that keeps getting passed on. So you see it over and over again. I have to have these conversations with my daughters all the time. I have an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old. And I have these conversations with them all the time. You don't have to fit anyone's mold. You don't have to play any role that anyone sets for you. And then you don't have to settle for being in a role because it's like, okay, now if your child is smart, then we got issues. If your child's not smart, then we got issues. If your child's cute, then we got issues. You know, either way, especially if you have girls, you know, uh -huh. it's a trickle down effect because the stereotypes that we perpetuate and that are often perpetuated by black men about black women are not positive. Mm -hmm. You're right. Thomas, I got to get you in. Not not that you speak for all black men, but we've had these conversations before. We understand, like, what we want us to be. So from what just Valerie just said and what all the ladies just said, like, what do you think is some of the, I guess, the, the root causes of why they feel that, that the reaction from black men is what they're saying it is? Or you know, or, or you know, what what do you think the, some of the root cause of that? And you, and you, you, you're free to speak on anything. We just oh, uh, don't worry, I, I, I feel free. I feel free. <laughs> don't worry about that part. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, so it's a it's a lot to unpack from all the things that the lady said. But uh, one of the things I I did learn is. I learned to listen in this whole thing. How about that? Look at that. So that's one positive thing that black men don't do. We don't yeah. listen to the women and find out what the issues are. We, we ready to be defensive and defend our position. All right. But it, it's some, some things that were not said by you all. Um, you all mentioned the, the, the wage gaps and all those things. You kept saying white counterparts, white counterparts, which made it more of a race issue. But I believe it's, it's more of a patriarchal issue. Well, men in general get paid more than women, and then I, your black men too, get paid more than black women. And what makes black women, from my perspective, the most disrespected is that when you come home, your, your black men want to hold on to their power and control from a patriarchal standpoint, and the message usually gets muddied because they use the race part, the black, the common ground, to say, "Hey, we're in the same boat." But the fight is, we're not in the same fight because we can always lean on our patriarchy to help it sell us and, and, and give us more power over the women and make us feel like the white man. Quite frankly, a lot of us try want to hold on that power and control that they think they value in the white man. And so that comes down into our homes where we disrespect and call our women B's and H's and, and, we talked about, um, oh, it's a lot. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, shoo, Lord. Shelby, uh, you mentioned um, basically, I, I put it like this. What Corey mentioned, I, I go to my kids' school because I'm not always present during my children's after um, hours. And so I miss all the things that they love to do, but I am there for the things that's important to me. I mean, the schoolwork and all those things and the trips and making sure they're exposed to the world. But when I go into the school, I am the dad for all children, it seems, because I get pulled in all directions to all the grades because I show up. Um, the moms get overlooked in that situation. 
if they, if, quite frankly, because mm -hmm. they're expected to be there, right. and they get overlooked. So I get privileged just because I'm a black man that walked in the building and gave some time to my children, but now I'm the a role model to all. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that comes with a responsibility. Um, black women. Ooh. Our media is killing us. Our media is killing us. Media yeah. is killing us. Media yeah. is killing us. Hip hop, more specifically, is killing us all. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 dehumanizing and devaluing our women in such a space that it's really hard to help them recover. But I will oh, say wow. this: I'm I'm very hopeful though, because there's a movement going on with black women that that does not include black men, and black men better hurry up and recognize what's going on because black women are leaving us behind. And they need our help. They don't want to go without us. They don't want to go. We too. I can't. Uh, I gotta watch my words because I'm, wow. I'm, 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 I'm a cusser. I'm a cusser. I'm a cusser. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't curse. I cuss. So I gotta watch what I say. <laughs> and I want to just be respectful. <laughs> but we just. It, <laughs> Mm. I, 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 I really, I gotta choose my words carefully because I don't. I'm not a man basher by no stretch of the mass imagination. Yeah, um, I, I think I'm. I think I'm very masculine man. Um, but I'm. <laughs> I do. I have learned to evaluate myself and realize what the toxic, the toxicity is in some of my masculinity. Right, right, right. You know what I mean. So I'm not saying you know. get rid of the masculine part, but we got to find the parts that are healthy for us and our and the people that we love. I'm gonna mm -hmm. stop a little bit so I can kind of regather my thoughts, but um, I still have a lot more to say. Yeah. So okay. So just kind of piggybacking on what Thomas was saying, and one of the levels I think, like I never thought about the whole school thing. Like I, now that you're saying that, yeah, I, I've been to school several times, and I feel like, like maybe I got preferential treatment because I was the guy, or whatever. But in in, other, in another area, that I think I've always thought that women were kind of quote unquote disrespected, really recently came to light in a, in a group that I think several of y'all are a part of, where you have black men who measure their level of success by having a non-black woman mm. on their arm. So like, and anybody can jump out there and say, so is, is that part of the disrespect? Like, how does that make you feel? And what do you think, you know, that that comes from, like from a society? That sounds like well, I think that it's easier. Is. I think it's easier sometimes to relate to those women because when they're in the home setting, they don't. Uh oh. Yeah. Hello. I think Hello. I froze for a second. Anybody else? No. But I, I think kind of what Erica was saying is those women don't have to work. They don't work. They are doting. They are there. And we're not always, let's be honest, we're not always going to be the one who had your slippers at the door. Right. Because we have other stuff to do. Correct. And that's, just, and that's how we were raised. We were raised, and for me, I was raised in a household with a mom and a dad. I'm on in work, but she worked in home, which meant dinner was here. She picked me up. She took me. Well, that's different than my situation. That's completely different. And I was always raised to like, you don't really need a man. If you need an oil mm -hmm. change, go get your oil change. If you need new tires, yeah. go get new tires. That's how my that's how my parents raised me. And that's how I raise, I'm raising my daughter. Look, if you yeah. want to share your life with somebody, cool. Like, you don't have to. And that's how I think our generation was kind of raised. But when I, I know for me, it bothers the hell out of me. When I see yeah. a black man with a white woman, it bothers me. But now if I see a black woman with a white man, I'm like, girl, gone. You want to get you some. Get your life. Yeah. I want to go back to Erica real quick, but yeah. I'll say this. I, I'll say this, and I, I'll be the first to tell y'all. You can love whoever you want to love. I don't care nothing about that. My issue is 
brothers that get white women because they feel like that's an elevation. Like that that's my Oh issue. yeah. Okay. Like oh, if yeah. you see somebody that's not black and you that a symbol. them, hey, more power to you. And I'm and I'm gonna say this to my sister. If these brothers keep tripping like that, hey, that's something new. Be happy. But all I'm saying is the ones that feel like it's a status symbol. Now that's why I have the problem. And I, and I go back to Eric right. we for a second. I mean, we want to cut. Well, I just wanted to say quickly that um, I think sometimes it's easier to be in those relationships because those women don't necessarily have the pressures that we have. So when we come home, we we are sometimes you know being in positions of leadership and things like that when we're out in uh, you know the workforce and things like that. And I think it's it's just. Um, it's it's not a reflection of us as women. It's really a reflection of that man's uh, insecurities and their male ego that you know they can't they don't want to put forth the effort to deal with a woman that may need a little bit more. So that woman that's you know not a black woman sometimes they don't need as much. They don't need additional time. They're able to be home and just you know catering to you and things like that and and sometimes you know you treasure the thing that you have um idealized for uh -huh. so long so when we look at the media and things like that we see who do we see as symbols of beauty you know white women things like exactly. that so when they are out in the community that's something you've idealized for your entire life and it's like oh now i have it oh i'm gonna treasure it i'm gonna but a black woman you live with her all your life so you're not treasuring that all of the time and that's not to say that that's all black men we're speaking in particular of the the ones that you were uh referring to yeah it's a big coach show it's your man the nfl draft it is hey, what's going on it's yeah think about the nfl draft okay. exactly nfl draft that's when isaiah i will never forget miss polly press yeah isaiah wilson yep <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah miss polly press Yep. We couldn't even see him. He did the work. Oh, look he took the camera. hit. Yep. And then when her mom, when his mama grabbed Pulled her, her back, she yanked her. Now, yanked her. <laughs> first of all, I think all of those had that been our mama, we would have got hit the next week. I think I'm 40, almost 44 years old. I don't pull back from my mama. Okay, yeah. so right. but that's what she knew. She was like, she ain't gonna tell me what to do when we go. For instance, when we go into a, a man's house to meet his mother, we sit down. We don't talk unless we're spoken to. We are polite, but when they go, they act like they own mm -hmm. the joint. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen it happen in my own my own yeah. family. They come in like they own the joint. I'm like, hold on, how? <laughs> we don't know you. They they so, get a pass. They get a pass. Right. 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 Oh, they don't know any better. They get a pass. Yeah. So Nicole, so, so they get a pass. You mean they like we talking about the white women get a pass? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get a, they get a they get a you all as black men give them you all don't hold them to the same standard. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you're with a black woman. There's sometimes I want to say a socioeconomic situation that isn't that of a ball player that doesn't allow that black woman to stay home. But when they've got that upper echelon and they're in that different tax bracket and the notoriety and they've got that Caucasian or Latino or Hispanic woman, she don't have to work. She got a, you know, a 15 carat ring on her hand. She don't have to do nothing else but show up and, mm -hmm. and birth babies. I'll tell you, when I was a Georgia girl, all four years at UGA, I used to tell all of my recruits, Lord. if if they don't like you when you outside of playing ball and, they, and their parents only chummy with you because you play ball at Georgia, that's a problem. That is, the, and, and Tiger Woods found that out real quick. <laughs> that's a problem. But that I, I becomes have... a problem. If those, if those if those parent, if those white parents wouldn't like you outside of you being a ball player, or if you get hurt and can't play and ain't going to the league, 
they don't want to have nothing to do with you. They would they think very differently of a black man that ain't going to the league. They 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 give you a head a head nod and will allow you to marry their white child because they know that at the end of the day their white child is their white daughter is going to be okay and living at the standard that they want to because in right. California she's going to get 50% regardless. <laughs> regardless. <laughs> I have a question though. Um, it's in, in, in line with that. It, maybe it's because of my age. I'm 45, so. But when I hear you all talk about these um, white women who come in and get the 15 carat wing, don't have to do much, and all these things, I don't particularly hear that black women. It's the black women I'm around. Let me say, express that that's what they desire. You know what I mean? Like to do nothing. You know that. To, now, don't get me wrong. We all want to. When, when my I want my having a sugar mama and some of them have. <laughs> you know, don't get me. You know what I'm saying? But that's not. The life goal, you know what I mean. So, I, so I wonder. I'm wondering, and I'm asking. Do is that? I mean, does that really make you? I mean, affect you how you think versus? Because I know a lot of women who are. Well, you open, you church, open, you, you know? open, but you open up your, you open up your wallet for a, a Hispanic and a white woman very differently than you do for a black woman. They and I think, I, 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 I think that's what all black. I think that's what all black. I think that's what all black women kind of give you side eye. It's like, dang, I was with him, you know, be you before, and you when know, you, when you well, didn't have you nothing. Whole quick county. It, exactly, <laughs> you didn't have <laughs> nothing. Was we just, was kicking it. Was just... Right, but now you can deal with but all the UGA. I, yeah, but now I all think... of a sudden you make an NFL, and and I'm not, you know, because when you didn't have nothing. Now call me crazy. I was fine. Call me you know, crazy. when I made dinner on Sunday. But you know, Thomas, I think one of the things we have to consider when you say that black women have, you know, never expressed that that's something that they desire. Hold on, let me be thing, clear. Let me, let, me, I admit, let me be clear. Okay. I wanna, let me right. let me just say this though. <laughs> get me jumped out of this. Get me jumped I outside. Think <laughs> one of the things that we have to consider is that black women, when we talk about black women being the most disrespected human on earth. That's even a disrespect because we don't even have the opportunity or the option for saying that I want to sit home and do nothing. We don't have that option. Who's gonna Who's gonna take care of us? Not, not, not. Let me say, let me say this. I'm so, not speed what you're saying. Yeah, I, I accept what you're saying. Let me say that. That's one thing I learned through marriage. You gotta learn how to. <laughs> All right. All right. But um, I guess. All right, I, I lost my thought now, but um, get it out. Come on, we got you. I got you. Can you? Can you oh my god, I had it right there because I'm learning how to listen. Yeah, to my phone. Why should that? Right. But well, like, why should that have to be? I was gonna say, why should that have to be? Why should that have to be something? Stating that we have to come out and say, I, when we get married, I ain't gonna work. I want to do for two women of other races. All right, so now I now like that's something that's already if you marry that girl, that's already a given. But I have to say, oh, I'm not working, and I'm going to sit home, and this is how this relationship is going to go in order for me to even have that option. Disrespect. Well, I, I and that's that something that as a man all, you truly want to do. Option. But I will. When, when I, I personally, there, that's we more are of a automatically this argument. But we are already thought of that. Oh, you go well, we still got some time. I got a question it, for It's not an if or right. or. But it, it sounds oh, like a, a more of an elitist argument, though, because not every black man that you are desiring to have has that opportunity to do that for you. That's a very small percentage of people that are able that, to do that. Oh, I do understand. That was an example. Saying. That was an example. And I use right, I use it example. as an example, but for but even in a relationship not of that caliber or that status with socioeconomic status there still are black men who look at their their black female their spouse their <laughs> girlfriend you know their significant other and we're just the other i got you but, you, but yes. when you get that but but when you get that that hispanic or white woman then you ready to go on vacation you I know you ready to you ready to you know so you go to the park the and have pictures 
go have picnics and do and do stuff and you you know you then you go oh well you ain't never want to do nothing well that's why I, 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 I got you i got you and i have seen black men who may not be in that economic status where they can automatically say their wife doesn't have to work who would be with a black woman expect her to work leave her go get with a white woman and then work double two job two three jobs so she does not have to work <laughs> but that goes well, to where co said that goes back to what co said in the beginning y'all will hold us down that's why i love my black women well, but then y'all abandon us no, do y'all even hear us? All right, yeah. that's fair. Yes, that's we fair. do, moderator. Oh, yeah, we, we can hear y'all. We're just having a whole conversation. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nashville. It's, it, it goes to what Nicole and Valerie were both saying, and, and kind of what Eric was saying, too. Like, I found, being that I did go also to the University of Georgia, I found, and I've had this conversation, I think me and Valerie have, have discussed this briefly, too. I found that in other cultures, not black cultures, there were Talk to find a husband. I think Shelby hit on it earlier. I wouldn't have. We're not. We don't need a husband. The F- so like we're the like, MRS. No, but just to be the MRS degree. The MRS degree. How many, yeah. degree. How, exactly. how many exactly. of us? We all fair. went to. Okay, we went to UGA. We went to UGA. Oh, My first roommate was white. <laughs> My thought it was really cool. She was from Rome, Georgia. <laughs> Her entire goal. Of going to the University of Georgia was not was to, to get, get a, a degree, man. but to get an MRS. The MRS was to find a husband. Right. That's yep. why she went. When we yep. go, okay, we find one too. You know, if we, we, you and I, we all know people that found the love of their life at the University of Georgia. Uh-huh. Okay, we didn't, but and that's okay. But that was not our goal. We went to get no. a degree. A bachelor's degree, a grad degree, a master's, mm-hmm. whatever. We didn't go to get married, but most other cultures, that is the entire reason they go. They spend the money for so the sorority is- house because they know that sorority house um, mm-hmm. hangs out with that fraternity house. And that fraternity and they- house has good, we know exactly. they got money over there. Right. Shelby, so I had a whole I had point a, in um, going. I had a coworker tell me, she said, um, y'all teach your daughters to date for the wrong thing. And I was mm. like, what exactly do you mean? Now, you know, when people said, don't get, don't get offended. If I say, say this, they're going to say something that's offensive. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, every time, every, time. So, every so single she, time, every time. So she was like, you teach your daughters to date the guy they like. I teach my mm-hmm. daughter to date the guy that's going to take care of her. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So she ain't even got to like the guy. She was like, no. She was like, even in high school, we teach our daughters to find the potential in that boy that's going to be somebody and take care of you later on in life. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that brings me to one other thing as of nature of this whole conversation. So usually those things, not, 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 let me take that back because usually I would assume that use of those type of relationships are the ones that kind of lead to the um, domestic violence, which is also one of the, the, the things that leads to why black women are the most disrespected um, people on this earth. So I want to kind of see if we can kind of yeah, touch yeah, on yeah. that because yeah. um, that, that that domestic violence piece. And like I said, I hear all those things, but the part that can alarms me the most is knowing that black women are are suffer they suffer uh, abuse at the hands of black men well really domestic violence at a rates disproportionate to others but because black women are mostly in relationships with black men that means that we're the ones who are beating you all and causing all the violence and so when i hear about the the trophy wives and all that other stuff eh, don't get me wrong, I, I think it's valuable, but I didn't want time to get away from us before we address that issue because I want to make sure that came Are up. you guys willing to come back that's for a, a part that's two? That's a great point. That's a great point. Absolutely. Uh, it's mm-hmm. time. That, that's a great way to, way to hold us, man, but because think, we haven't discussed it all. And I think, but Thomas, I Abuse. think, yeah, but I think part of that is fatherless girls, fatherless daughters. If you don't no. have a dad, that hugs you and says, I love you for whatever reason, be it 
he's not in the picture, be it he, like my husband is deceased. So my daughter doesn't, my daughter has a father figure, but her dad died. But if you don't have, but I had a dad who was at every event I ever did, every recital, every good grief, everything that I was ever involved in, he was always there, even when my mom didn't come. So when you have, when you grow up with that, you know how to be treated and you do not accept. It definitely does. You don't accept anything because you know how your father treated you. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. you have, and when you have domestic violence in the family, it's hard to break that cycle because it's all you see. And if that's all you see, that's all you know. Yeah. And that's a perfect, perfect stopping point. Um, so me and Big Co, we're going to get together, figure out what we're going to do part two of the show. We would really love to have all of y'all back because it's, look, I got notes. I got stuff that we need to talk about. We didn't even get to. <laughs> we get to the one more comment. One comment. I'm gonna let you get. I'm gonna let you get a party shot. We're gonna we're gonna do party shots. So, but it's definitely like we want to continue this dialogue. We appreciate everybody for coming on the show. We're gonna go around the horn and do party shots. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Uh, because we want to, you know, get. I I got stuff to do. You know, what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, look. <laughs> Party shots. His Thomas Thomas kind of been the odd man, and he been like the minority. And he has so <laughs> normally we go ladies first, but since you're the minority in this situation, Thomas, give us your party shot. I just want to share with Shelby real quick that um, though I, I accept all your words, I as a man heard it is letting the men off the hook. It's because women didn't have dads. That sound like victim blaming to me. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's what you were doing, but I'm saying it. When, when I heard you describing that, it took the onus off of the, the abuser. Like those men don't have dads. They don't know. You know what I, mean? I, I want to put the take it off the victim and put it on the men. You know what I mean? Right. It, it doesn't matter if you don't have a dad. You shouldn't be touched. 30. Good job. Hey, hey, that's great, great, great. That was <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Valerie. And even like when Thomas was saying to piggyback off what Shelby was saying, I had a friend to tell me, you know, I know why you're not married. And I said, why? And she said, because you had a father. A father shouldn't be a negative. <laughs> and so no, oh, wow. that person sets a standard that you won't lower yourself below, you know, and that a lot of times I agree that leads to a lot of the situations that we see with women staying in domestic violence relationships, oh, yeah. because I think that this is all I know, and this is all I can do, and this is all I expect. Wow, that's a good one. Look, we did that because that's that's a huge point. You know what I mean? Like, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Eric. Fine. Okay, my final words. I just want to say that you know, as black women um, and you black guys here on here, we have to learn to have a little bit more compassion for each other. We're in all of this together. We're in this together. Um, are black women perfect? No. Do we do things that that destroy our relationships? Absolutely. Do black men do the same? Absolutely. It's important for for girls to have their dads, but it's important for for boys to have their dads too because. Men are the ones that show boys how to be men. And if their the fathers are absent, it, it affects the entire family. So I just think that we all need to have a little bit more compassion for each other um, so that we can build stronger families. Awesome. Thank you. Nicole. Oh, I, 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 da, 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 da. I guess I would say um, trying to break the... I'm, I'm really bad at the whole independent Black woman don't, you know stereotype. I'm really that person. I'm bring that up. I, We're going to talk about that next time. Please. Bring um, I got you. I got you. I, 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 am, I am guilty. I will. I can pull out. I'm a card carrying member, you know, and I still have to be reminded that it's okay if somebody says, let me wash your car. You know, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take the trash out. That's really hard thing for black women who have been single or, you know, raised in that manner to do is to give up that sense of control to a man who may or may not disappoint you. And I'm going to leave it on that. 
All right. control, man. We got to touch on control next week. But it, we, we, we yeah. Thomas touched on it with the Patreon. We got a lot of stuff. I think we got a lot of stuff to unpack. Again, to all of our co stars this evening, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the commentary. Thank you for joining. We would love to have y'all all again because, like I said, it's a lot of stuff that we need to discuss, particularly because I feel like the abuse yeah. that, that Thomas brought up, that, that's huge. That's huge. It is. So, Good night, everybody. Look, it's the Good night. Good night. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. Bye. 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 Thank you all my dogs for joining us today, all my people. We love y'all. Uh, if for some reason that the Lakers lose game one, it's still, it's still Lakers. Still Lakers. <laughs> I've been LA all day. I'm going to stay being LA all day. Lakers in, I ain't going to say five. Lakers in six. Hey, the song of the day. Uh, beautiful skin. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.